Fellow citizens, St. Kitts and Nevis is now facing a general election that has come three years prematurely. It will be one of the most contentious and divisive polls in our modern history. It is my hope, however, that it would be exercised in an atmosphere of tranquility and that it would be peaceful. There are those who believe that this election might provide a much needed political cleansing. If this is the case, then hopefully it may lead to a fresh start and a renewal of our faith in our democratic principles, in our decency and other moral values, including transparency and trust. Trust is the bedrock of any relationship or partnership, including in politics. This election must be about the people, all the people. Not just those in St. Kitts, but also those in Nevis. This election must be about the poor and struggling families, not just one family. This election must be about hope for a better future, not about a handout for today. It must be an election that seeks to safeguard the interests of people of all subcultures who now make St. Kitts and Nevis their home. It should also be an election that produces new leaders who can be trusted to deliver a genuine program of hope and prosperity for native Kittitians and Nevisians. But this election must also provide hope for immigrants who have now settled here from other Caribbean nations. Since I left office in 1995, after 15 years, first as Premier, then as Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Nevis, I have made few political speeches, except for a small sample of platform appearances and a few at the annual convention of the People's Action Movement, PAM, a party that I co-founded in 1965. Though I have continued to support my party, I have generally stayed in the background because that is what retired politicians and leaders are expected to do. However, the current state of affairs in my country has forced me to break my tradition, and I can no longer remain silent. The silence of good people is more dangerous than the brutality of bad people, said Martin Luther King, Jr., some six decades ago. Fellow citizens, we must carefully protect our freedoms and our constitutional rights. Evil thrives when good people do nothing. We have an opportunity now to let our vote speak volumes about who we are as a people. Dr. King also reminded us that the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. The ultimate tragedy, you see, is not the oppression and cruelty by the bad people, but the silence over that oppression by the good people. Therefore, if you are one of the good people, you cannot remain silent, and most definitely, you cannot afford to allow bad people to again occupy positions of power. If you do, they will continue their onslaught of oppression, victimization, and intimidation. 
One must always take a position because his conscience tells him it is right, not because it is popular. After much soul searching, I have made the decision that I cannot simply stand aside nor remain silent and see my country sinking into a crisis of morality in the midst of a rampant, self-seeking, and greedy dictatorship. Not too long ago, our country fell into the hands of the IMF because our national debt had soared so high that we became one of the most indebted nations in the world. You may also remember that St. Kitts and Nevis suffered a hurtful bruising of its national image on the world stage, which resulted in Canada and the United States imposing severe sanctions on our beloved nation because of the corrupting of our CBI program. What we did not and could not imagine is that today we would be experiencing a political nightmare of nepotism and greed that threatens to destroy the very foundation of our economic stability. We cannot allow ourselves to once again descend into another moment of despair, simply to satisfy the personal interests of one individual or one family and their close associates. We cannot afford to allow our national assets and resources to become the personal financial trophies and pathway to wealth of one man. When I and His Excellency Ambassador William Billy Herbert and others founded and implemented the citizenship Citizenship by Investment Program in 1984. We did so to help the country, not enrich any one individual. We cannot now allow the squandering of our patrimony at the expense of the needs of our people who yearn for better health care, education, better roads, and schools, and higher paying jobs. Yes, jobs. Addressing the employment issues of this country must be a top priority of the new government. Let us find jobs for our people rather than seeking to keep them dependent on anyone for a handout. Anyone who is asking people to vote for them in exchange for a handout should be rejected. We the people must tell our politicians to create long-term jobs instead of one-day handouts. This is not new thinking. My party, the People's Action Movement, since 1965, has always followed the philosophy of putting our people first. And this means lower taxes, less direct taxes, a private sector-led economy, and opportunities for the small man and woman to start his or her business. I therefore welcome the plan by PAM and CCM to create 5,000 new jobs in their first term. <clears throat> While you may be distracted by all the theater and personal attacks from the political platforms, I urge all citizens to refocus their attention on the issues that are affecting our country, like the need for reliable running water in our homes, and national health care that is affordable to the poor and vulnerable groups. It is sad that a basic thing such as water 
is at times so difficult to receive in a growing number of communities throughout St. Kitts. While we are failing to deliver water and affordable health care, we seem more concerned about building a jail to lock up our people. If the peace is working, why are we building a $2 billion prison? Why are we so focused on putting our people in a new prison? Isn't there a greater and more urgent need for a new hospital, as well as proper roads and decent jobs and houses? We must get our priorities right. And if those who have the responsibility cannot deliver, then they ought to step aside or be moved aside for serious men and women to take care of the needs of the people. And that is why I am now firmly convinced that the respectable and trustworthy team of PAM and CCM, led by the Honorable Sean Richards and the Honorable Mark Brantley, is indeed the best hope for the future of this country. This team is the best hope to return stability to St. Kitts and Nevis. Sean Richards is a supremely intelligent and highly qualified accountant. He has the professional standing and the parliamentary experience, both as a former deputy prime minister and a member of the opposition. He is now ready and able to steady the ship of state and guide it expertly and safely through the challenging financial times that lie ahead. Sean Richards has a lot to bring to the table. He will bring the greatest and most impactful political movement that plucked our nation from the brink of destruction in 1980 and led it into independence in 1983. That movement is the People's Action Movement. In addition, he will embrace another great movement across the Narrows and bring into the corridors of power the progressive, concerned citizens' movement, the CCM. And I, I repeat, so that all businessmen and businesswomen can hear me, and so that all women and the elderly can hear me, I'm going to repeat so that all the young people can hear me. PAM and CCM represent the best hope for St. Kitts and Nevis. Every major economic, social, educational development since the decline of sugar was introduced by PAM, especially the CBI program. Now Harris wants to use the same CBI program to enrich himself. While it's causing powerful countries like the USA and those in Europe to threaten the very survival of this program. As soon as the election is over, our priority should be to save our CBI program. I was happy and relieved when political leader Richards stated at a public forum that he would immediately create an emergency fund from our current CBI resources. That is great thinking, great leadership. The next action I would recommend is that we immediately reappoint the Honorable Mark Brantley as Minister of Foreign Affairs and dispatch him to Europe to use all his diplomatic and negotiating skills to save our visa-free access for all of us. The Honorable Richards is the political leader of the People's Action Movement, 
a 57-year-old political movement, which has been the best thing that has ever happened to St. Kitts and Nevis. There has not been any modern pillar of development that was not created by Pam. Our leader represents a great legacy. So when anyone tries to destroy Sean Richards or to undermine him or assassinate his character, they are doing these things to the entire body of Pam. This is an attack on every one of us. And all of us must stand firm in defense of our leader, our party, and our nation. I am calling on all PAM people, old and young, to mobilize in defense of our party and our country. If we have internal issues, we can and will solve them together in-house. I am fully on board and I am calling on all PAM to come back home. We got a country to save. Anyone who stands with Timothy Harris in the face of his destructive and egomaniacal lust for absolute power, stand not only against Pam, but they also stand against our country. Pam and CCM are needed now to return decency and trust to government. In turning the page to new leadership of this country, we need to elect the state of candidates that would keep the promise to deliver good governance. Without good governance, our democracy would be threatened. And already we are seeing signs of the turmoil that is possible when there are no strong laws to promote good governance. I therefore urge you, the voters, to give your firm support to political leader Richards so that new laws can be introduced to strengthen our democracy. The new PAM CCM government, when installed, must move with speed to curb the powers of the prime minister, any prime minister given the wanton abuse in recent years. If it requires a constitutional amendment, so be it. But it should state that the prime minister must always have the support of the majority of the elected members of parliament. If at any time it is clearly and unambiguously manifest that the Prime Minister no longer has the support of the majority of the elected representatives, the Prime Minister must resign immediately. If he or she fails to do so, he or she must be dismissed forthwith. And the person who does have the required support be appointed as Prime Minister with immediate effect. A prime minister must at all times have the support of the majority of the elected representatives. In addition, I would like the PAM CCM incoming government to quickly reintroduce into parliament the bills for term limits for prime minister, a fixed election date integrity in public life legislation, electoral reform, and other matters on the good governance agenda. Equally important is the urgent need for tough legislation to govern how government contracts are awarded. For the benefit of future generations, this present danger to our democracy that is pretending to be a real government must be removed with the greatest urgency. Fortunately, your opportunity is just a few days away. 
When I decided to support the efforts of the Team Unity Alliance, I did so in order to get rid of Denzel Douglas. We succeeded. I took that decision also because of the opportunity to change the political culture of St. Kitts and Nevis and to end the political polarization which has plagued us. That is still my mission. Actually, Pam and PLP people were getting along pretty well. The problem was, and still is, Timothy Harris. The other reasons I supported the alliance in 2015 were that I wanted our government to develop the country for the benefit of all our people in a fair and just manner. And finally, I wanted us as a country to return integrity and accountability to our government. But Timothy Harris destroyed all those plans. The coalition was dissolved because of two reasons, and Timothy Harris is to blame for both. The reasons were greed, greed to become wealthy. The second was his continued system of undermining all his colleagues. As Minister of Finance, he refused to fund many projects and programs, even though they were approved by cabinet. This caused supporters to feel that it was the Pam ministers who were not acting. But although the Pam ministers were fighting for their people, the Minister of Finance kept refusing or delaying to support their projects. As Sean Richards once said, he, Timothy, would look them in the eye and say yes, and next day begin the process of undermining them. Not just Sean and Pam, not just Mark and CCM, but even the other PLP minister was undermined by her leader. His sole purpose was to make them look bad in the eyes of the public and in the eyes of their party supporters. But behind their backs, he plotted to make himself look like the savior. He wanted everyone to praise him. He did not want his ministers to get any credit. Everything must be about Timothy. They tried quietly for years, trying to hash out their disagreement privately, but without success. The situation got worse, but he continued to ignore them. They tried again late last year and again in January this year, but again, Harris ignored their concerns. They wrote to him for discussions, but he ignored their concerns and refused to negotiate with them. Or he said he couldn't diminish the office of the prime minister, failing to recognize that they made him prime minister. He proceeded to kick down the ladder by which he had ascended. It was only after the, all of these efforts failed to resolve the differences that the decision had to be made to dissolve the partnership. The six representatives were left with no alternative but to take their case to the people because it was the people who elected them. Today, I am very proud of Sean Richards and Mark Grant Brantley and the other four MPs who took a stand Eugene Hamilton once told me that he warned Sean that Timothy was undermining him and would throw him under the bus. If Sean had not moved when he did, in three years' time, there would have been no problem. Sean had to move to save the country and to save his party. Permit me now to explain why you cannot support Dr. Timothy Harris and his Labour Party. The first reason is his slate of candidates. Have you ever asked yourself 
rich portfolios each of them would serve in if they succeed in stealing the elections? Can you imagine any one of Timothy's candidates being sent abroad to the European Union to deal with such a crucial issue like trying to save our CBI program? Not one of them. As for Timothy, you know he is afraid to go because he would have some serious questions to answer. Think of it. If Timothy, too, if Timothy Harris is returned to office, you will witness a massive scale of victimization that this country has never seen. Thousands would be fired from their jobs. They would harass you and terrorize you. Corruption in government would increase and so would nepotism. As friends and family were given priority in this country. Keep in mind, he wants to get back into office to finish the prison and to allow the family to make millions and millions while you just get a chance to be unpacked and stick. You must stop them. The fourth and fifth reasons are about Harris's appetite for betrayal. These will shock you, but will help you to decide to see his trail of deceit. Harris was in the Labour cabinet of Prime Minister Dr. Denzel Douglas for 18 years. Even though his former colleagues knew he could not be trusted, he remained in their fold and they kept quiet about his ways. I too saw signs that he could not be trusted when he eventually teamed up with Pam and CCM. Everyone that he has had as a partner, even those who formed the PLP with him, eventually fell out with him. And it is always for the same reasons, distrust and betrayal. During the past seven years of the former Team Unity government, I remained cordial but careful with Harris because I knew that betrayal and victim, vindictiveness remained a part of his nature. He betrayed CCM. He betrayed Pam. He betrayed the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. And he also had a history of betraying the St. Kitts Nevis Labour Party. Harris has been betraying Pam and its members of cabinet from the first day they took office in 2015. Much of it we only found out later. But if Pam thinks Harris betrayed them, the St. Kitts Nevis Labour Party supporters should also know that he spent many years plotting against them. Here is a piece of history that most of you did not know about. But it is a history that would convince you that no one should and no one could trust the outgoing prime minister. What am I, about, I am about to tell you, I don't think that even Dr. Denzel Douglas knew about it. Most of you would remember the morning after the election of 2010. When Prime Minister Denzel Douglas went to government house to have his entire cabinet sworn in, as was the custom in those days. When Dr. Douglas looked around for Timothy Harris, Timothy was not there. He was absent because he was working on a plan to give Douglas the shock of his life. Dr. Harris was absent because he was trying to put together a coalition to get rid of Douglas and to make himself prime minister. How do I know this? Earlier that morning, I received a call from an intermediary of Timothy Harris. The intermediary was someone that he thought I would listen to. The message was to ask me to talk to Mr. Joseph Parry, who was then the leader of the Nevis Reformation Party, NAP. 
Harris wanted to ask Joseph Perry to talk to his successful candidate, Mr. Patrice Nisbet, and to ask Mr. Nisbet not to rush into any association with Dr. Denzel Douglas, because he, Timothy, was working on a plan to form a government. The message also suggested that there was a possibility that Pam could be in the government rather than in opposition. If Parry agreed to convince Patrice Nisbet not to work with Douglas, Mr. Parry was not interested, so he rejected the suggestion. It was only then that Timothy Harris eventually returned to the Douglas fold and was sworn in. So that was after the 2010 election. Now let us examine what Harris did 10 years later following the 2020 elections. After the 2020 polls, Timothy Harris decided that he did not want Juicy Byron again as Attorney General. Yes, Timothy did not want Juicy Byron as Attorney General. He contacted and asked a prominent member of PAM to recommend someone who could replace Byron. Harris said Byron was lazy and incompetent. I was consulted by the member of PAM. But after discussion, we decided not to submit any names. Harris then rushed to get himself sworn in, leaving Juicy dangling in uncertainty. Many of you would recall that unlike previous years, no attorney general was sworn in in 2020 when the prime minister took his oath. The reason is what I have just told you. Eventually, because no suggestions were given to Harris to replace Byron, Byron was eventually sworn in. <laughs> Someone should tell the Attorney General that he was being betrayed by Timothy because he may not have known. Of course, he continued to smile with you and butter you up juicy. But he did not want you. Instead, he made you think it was your Pam colleagues who wanted you out. No, it was not. We kept you on. Two other reasons you cannot support the Harris group. Relate to his old ways of victimization. When Labour came into power in 1995, Harris became, for the first time, a minister of government in the Denzel Douglas administration. Harris immediately went on a victimization spree. The first man he mapped was a farmer named Ben Phipps of Molyneux. His wife was Doreen Phipps, a well-known PAM activist and member. Timothy went on a rampage. Their farm was the family's means of sustenance and livelihood. Like so many other farmers in the area, Ben Phipps paid the prescribed rental for the land regularly and on time. Unceremoniously, Timothy Harris took away the land from Ben Phipps, moved in the bulldozers, and destroyed the crops that were growing and deprived the Phipps family of their livelihood. Ben Phipps pined away. And before the next election in 2000, Ben Phipps was dead. Some say he died of a broken heart. A few years later, his wife Doreen also died. Despite the loss of their parents, the family of Ben and Doreen Phipps still found it in their hearts to forgive Timothy. He went to them on his knees with water in the eye, begging for forgiveness. Like good Christians, they forgave him because even the dying thief on the cross 
received forgiveness. And still, Harris continued his ways of betrayal. The next man he marked was Pastor Kelvin Jones of the Mount Carmel Baptist Church at Upper Boreo. Pastor Jones had bought land from the government to build his home. Timothy Harris decided to take back part of Pastor Jones' land. He sent in the bulldozer supported by the army. They were given firm instructions to tolerate no opposition and to shoot if necessary. This is the true nature and the political DNA of Timothy Harris. He would pretend in your presence, but would not hesitate to stab you in the back. So despite the many visits to church every Sunday, his heart is not pure and it is not in the right place. Right now, Timothy Harris and his accomplices are trying to do two things. They are trying to corrupt the electoral process and they are trying to steal and buy the election. We have no choice. We the people have no choice but to vote for the PAM CCM team under the leadership of the Honorable Sean Richards. For the benefit of future generations, this present danger to our democracy, Timothy Harris, must be removed with the greatest urgency. All hands must be on board. We have a nation to save. Timothy Sylvester Harris is not just bad for Pam. He's not just bad for Labour. He's not just bad for Nevis. Timothy Harris is just plain old bad for this country. He has endangered the source of our financial stability, which is our CBI program. If the millions from this program dry up, we are all in trouble. Timothy Harris must be stopped. No. How do we stop him? Here is how. We, the people, must reject all of his candidates, including him. We must all vote for the PAM and CCM because that way lies the salvation of our federation. Timothy Harris is a clear and present danger to the democracy of St. Kitts and Nevis. May God bless and protect us all. <laughs>